Hi, I'm Dave Rose, and this is my wife, Wilma Rose, and we'd like to visit with you this evening about moving to Brighton in 1977. Uh, Wilma and I and our two sons moved from Iowa. At the time, uh, I was offered a position as an elementary school principal at Henderson Elementary, and it was a great experience being a principal uh, at that school for 14 years. And then as principal at Northeast Elementary in Brighton for another 18 years. So we'd like, like to share with you a little bit about our adventures of moving to Brighton and the changes we've seen in Brighton the past 35 years. We'll move. Yep. At the time we moved here, we had two sons, our oldest son, Ryan, who was four, and a younger son, Shannon, who was eight months. So uh, the change from Iowa to the climate of Colorado was very different. And I'm a, I love gardening. and. Our first attempt at trying to garden was uh, rather disastrous. Uh, so in order for me to be able to garden in this climate, I actually took uh, the uh, CSU um, extension course on master gardening. And so that helped tremendously in making a much easier transition. Uh, our sons uh, uh, were very uh, active in our sports throughout the time we've lived here in Brighton. Uh, our youngest son uh, was a, had a congenital heart disease and unfortunately he passed away when he was four years old. So we have other reasons why too we find Brighton to be our home. Uh, our son is buried here. And our, uh, since then we also had two daughters uh, Samantha and Megan and they all grew up in Brighton went to high school and graduated from high school and went on to college when we moved here uh, Brighton was a flourishing community especially the downtown Main Street which was uh, an attraction for us it had uh, actually had uh, men's stores shoe stores ladies toggery uh, different kind of many different kinds of stores that were very uh, active and a lot of people would uh, frequent going to those stores on a regular basis. So it was pretty exciting at downtown Brighton uh, when we moved here in 77. Unfortunately, the opening of North Glen Mall seemed to uh, take a lot of the business from Brighton. And over years, it uh, tended to decrease, obviously, in business and, and uh, shoppers. So that was a real issue. And over the years that I've been, in, we've been in Brighton, I've been involved in the city government in one capacity or another. Uh, and one of the major objectives was trying to uh, increase the activity again in downtown uh, Brighton and that's one of the reasons I've been on the Brighton Urban Renewal Authority for the past 10 years. Also um, we were always very active in our community which was one of the reasons why I think we really like Brighton is because of the ability to jump in and do things <coughs> that we find of interest. Uh, I was always active in our church uh, as well as Dave uh, and also many of the community events, uh, uh, FISH, many people may remember the FISH organization which was uh, put together to help people, needy people, uh, for food and uh, shelter, and many other type, uh, Meals on <coughs> Wheels, uh, and of course in the school system. Uh, Dave being in the, as an elementary principal, uh, was always very active there, so we always were uh, active in their um, different events. And with our children in school, uh, as every mother and father knows, uh, you automatically become involved in the school districts, uh, which helped, I think, with our children being also very active in their school. But uh, overall, I think uh, the shopping here was tremendous when we first moved here. And then, of course, the 80s hit, and that was one of the first, re uh, that was a recession at that time, and we definitely saw a huge drop in businesses around here. And as I used to joke with uh, Daryl Myers, uh, a former city council member, we said our, our activity, our fun part of the week was to go visit the one 
home that was being built in Brighton. Mm. And there are many people who remember yeah. those days. Uh, and so uh, going from the recession with hardly anything going on and then about 10, 12 years later, having the boom of Brighton happening, uh, that was a, a big change too. And it's been wonderful seeing the change happen in the last 10 years. Well, one of the things we noticed when uh, we moved to Brighton, which was kind of interesting, uh, yes, we're a smaller community, but still large enough to have 4th of July fireworks. And we were used to coming from Iowa, being in communities where fourth, the 4th of July was a big, big event and beautiful fireworks for families. We had no fireworks at Brighton at that time. And I <clears throat> took it on myself to try to get fireworks started uh, in the city of Brighton and through working with different groups and people that were interested, uh, we did, we're, we're able to get the city involved and they uh, uh, put in some money for the fireworks and we were able to have a fireworks display, the first one in, um, I believe 1983 or 1982 or 1983, I believe. At that time, uh, the council was happy with the work efforts I had done in bringing fireworks to Brighton, so they, there was a vacancy on city council and they asked if I would be interested and I was appointed to city council. And later I uh, was elected, obviously, for city council and as mayor. So it was an exciting time to uh, be, be get involved in, in the city government, be involved in the school district, uh, and being the mayor. It was interesting, be, lot, there was a lot going on, as Wilman mentioned, there was a recession, so we didn't have the funding, there weren't many housing starts, uh, but we were able to do some things that uh, I think were meaningful at the time for not a lot of money. One of them was re restoration of this building, uh, the old city hall, and a beautiful job. Uh, Tony Mortellaro at that time was the assistant city manager, had a lot to do, it, do with it, and Pat McDermott was the city manager and took a lot of pride and interest, and now we still have a beautiful building. Also, we restored the old senior center at the time, and now, of course, there's a new senior center. We put in uh, playground equipment in many of the playgrounds, a water slide in the, in the old swimming pool. I was the first one to go down and cut the ribbon as mayor on the water slide, and even building a new building uh, at the cemetery. So they were projects that were not extremely expensive, but I think were meaningful for the city of Brighton at that time. Well, and then at that time too, uh, was we had a hospital, and uh, knowing that it was be uh, coming in ill repair, I guess you would say, uh, it was decided that we needed to get a, a new addition and new parts, or redo the remodel the old hospital. I was on the ladies' auxiliary at that time. One of the things that we did with our fundraiser was to raise uh, money for a machine for mammograms. And, uh, and then after that also, there was a huge drive to remodel the, and add, add on to the old hospital on Egbert. And of course, we know now uh, they've built a brand new hospital out on Prairie Center Parkway. And uh, the old hospital has become our uh, education Resource Center, uh, which I think Brighton can be very proud of uh, because we have so many uh, different educational uh, groups that are being a part of that, from preschool all the way up to uh, college level courses. So uh, I think, and we can also uh, thank, I think, Burra, uh, definitely, uh, Brighton Urban Renewal Authority, in being able to help uh, re. Uh, organized that whole center and of course that was also totally remodeled. Uh, so there are so many things I think Brighton has done uh, well. Uh, as Dave said he was on council during the 80s and early 90s and, and I came on council in 2005. Many of the factors uh, for DIA uh, that were important to Brighton uh, we were able to get about seven out of eight of those through negotiations I was, as mayor, chief negotiator for the city of Brighton with DIA. And that was important because I think DIA has a lot to do with the, uh, the development of Brighton, how well it's uh, prog progressed and grown in the last 20-some uh, years. Well, and uh, along with that, E-470 came sure. in. Sure, in all and those areas, right. I-76 we have and I-25, so. 
And the other thing, though, the, cent the centennial, what's kind of interesting, I was on council mayor during the first, uh, the centennial in Brighton in 1987. And if you look at the uh, uh, agenda during that time, it was a three day, it was a three day event and it was uh, called the Brighton, Brighton's Heritage Festival. It actually was a hundred year centennial. And we had many really exciting events going at that time. We had a committee of many, many people that were involved in the community putting together the festival. On, I remember on Friday, the first day, that with all the day's activities and breakfasts and things going on in the park, there was a parade. And the parade was in the evening, like at 6.30 on a Friday evening, through the neighborhoods of, of Brighton by the old senior center. It was a beautiful evening. Uh, it was cooler in the evening. I was really uh, thrilled with the number of people that came out. It was probably one of the biggest parades of all times in the city of Brighton in terms of attendance until, of course, the Festival of Lights started, which has really been a big hit. But the parade was an exciting, really, kickoff for that uh, celebration. And it continued on the Saturday with all kinds of activities in the park and booths set up and things people could visit and entertainment. It went on, on through Sunday with a, a large uh, gathering of the churches for one church service, which was very impressive. Uh, I think people really enjoyed the time during the centennial. And there was a lot of excitement in the air. Uh, a lot of optimism about Brighton and what was going on. It was just a real uh, good feeling for the people and the times in Brighton. And I really was proud of the fact that uh, I was uh, the mayor during that time and it was exciting for our, our family and myself and the community. Now, now, Wilma, who's now in city council, is involved with the 125th anniversary. And we're doing a lot of um, events that afternoon and evening as well. Uh, I can remember the first, uh, the hundredth anniversary. Uh, our youngest daughter was still a baby, but I remember getting a costume, a heritage um, dress that was black taffeta. And I, um, Fourth of July, of course, at that time was extremely hot. And I still remember having to wear that very hot dress and sympathizing with the women in years gone by who had to dress that way on a daily basis. So uh, we will still have those type of things happening for the 125th. Uh, a number of people will be wearing uh, our heritage, uh, our vintage clothing. Um, we're also doing a program and in inviting VIPs just as well as we did for the first, the 100th. When Governor Romer was there. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we are hoping that Governor Hickenlooper will also be attending and uh, having a program that will cover our heritage as well as our fashions of those days, the music and all combining that together. So. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have a great celebration, and I hope we have as good attendance uh, for our 125th as we did for our 100th. Mm -hmm. uh, we still will have a lot of different groups uh, from our cultural aspects that will also be partaking of the day, so uh, I think many people will have a great afternoon. Yeah, I think so. It's interesting also that this 125th is now going to be held at the new park behind the newly refurbished city hall in Carmichael Park. And as many of you realize, uh, the Carmichaels were the founders of the city of Brighton. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, have the Carmichael Park at the time in the, uh, the hundreds, but we did do it uh, at Benedict Park, had all the festivities there. Of course, the fireworks have been viewed from Benedict Park now for years. And so it's really interesting that, uh, and I think very insightful in the city's part to have Carmichael behind uh, the old city hall since that park one time was the old Adams County Fairgrounds. So but, it's a good piece of history. But that also, it isn't just the back part, the whole, uh, the parking lot, what the city hall sits on is Carmichael mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. And as Dave said, uh, the fairgrounds were first, that was where they were behind the city hall. And uh, they were moved to, um, out to Adams County Fairgrounds presently. Uh, in I think the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, so it was tremendously uh, a very active fairgrounds uh, from all the history pieces that we've been able to read about it. So, uh, but now it's, it's going to be an active place again. 
it's going to be a wonderful park for many of the people in the neighborhoods to be able to uh, enjoy and having our first dedication on the 4th of July at our 125th anniversary will also make it a special moment. Yeah, I guess I'd like to close by saying uh, the 35 years we've been here uh, raising our family here, as Wilma mentioned, we had two daughters and all our children went through the uh, Brighton Public Schools and did very well and continue to do well. Uh, we've enjoyed seeing the Brighton grow and challenge certain issues and then overcome those issues and continue continue to prosper. I think Brighton as the county seat of Adams County is a great place to live, a great place to raise your family. We've enjoyed it and we look forward to the next uh, decades that we hope to be in Brighton. So thank you for listening this today. <laughs>